This week, Anthropic and Google both announced that Gemini and Claude can now look at previous conversations. They have memory. Very similar to the way ChatGPT can look at your past conversations. I asked them my favorite food. It looked at relevant chats. It said hamburgers, which is easy. In and out burger, obviously. But it has my specific order. Double meat, animal style, extra toasted bun, mustard, raw chopped onions, animal style fries, no cheese. If you know, you know. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about AI memory and how it's both good and bad for context. Focusing specifically on Cloud, but also talking about ChatGPT and Gemini. Then I'm gonna show you my favorite memory MCB server. And this feature is quite controversial. I'm excited about it, but at the same time, I'm wary. Let me explain why. First of all, how many times have you had a conversation with AI that you had to start over because of a rate limit? You had to explain what you learned in the past conversation. It's really annoying. And the ability for it to look at past chats to get to context is huge. It will help us a lot. It will save us a lot of time. But there's a flip side to it. And no, I'm not talking about privacy. If implemented or used incorrectly, it could actually make us a lot less efficient. So Anthropic released it for Claude. So to get memory, you have to go to your settings and you have to enable it but it's only available for people on the max plan right now. It's called conversation preferences and you turn on search and reference chats. And basically the way it works, you could ask it things about yourself or about your past conversations and it could recall them. I could say something like, what kind of glasses do I have? And let's see if it remembers. Looking for relevant chats. Based on our previous conversations, you have the Ray-Ban Meta glasses. It remembers that I originally had the Ray-Ban Meta size 50, which were too small. So I ordered the Ray-Ban Meta size 53 which are these ones, the bigger ones. It also remembers that I got prescription lenses. I got these ones on Black Friday. So we're talking about a conversation from more than half a year ago. And while this feature is still in beta, there's two implementations about it that I really like. One, it gives you visibility. It tells you when it's referencing relevant chats. And then on the web, you can even click through these conversations. So in a way, it's a feature within a feature that improves Claude's search and helps you find exactly what you're looking for in your previous chats. The main thing that's missing for me is I wish I was able to turn it on and off from this search and tools button down here. And it's on MCP server, but it's a setting like extended thinking that I think should be easy to toggle on and off. Now I was looking through the documentation and what's interesting about it here is what Claude could actually look at. You can prompt Claude to search conversations within these boundaries, all chats outside of projects or individual project conversations. Searchers are limited within each specific project. So I think that's a really cool use case. And it's similar to ChatGPT in the sense that ChatGPT has had memory for a while, but ChatGPT has two different types of memory. If you go into personalization, you could either reference save memories, which is what Claude and Gemini just got, or you can manage memories where you can add or delete specific memories that will always know about you. And I haven't gotten access to Gemini's version yet because to be honest, I don't pay for Gemini, but I think it should be coming to everybody regardless. We're rolling out to 2.5 Pro users today, and they already have this feature built in. So if you don't want it to save sensitive information, you could turn on temporary chat, which is kind of like incognito mode. That's the other thing. I use ChatGPT, I use Claude, I use Gemini, I use the meta AI sometimes. And basically our memories are being siloed. They're all being saved separately. And it would actually be really useful if we're able to share memories. That's another reason I like MCP because essentially when MCP is fully adopted by all these companies, we'll be able to connect our own tools or in this case, our own memory. I've been using basic memory for a while. This is the one I've stuck with. What I like about it is it stores your memory as a markdown file. And then you could essentially edit it yourself. It's really easy. So I edit and manage my memories with Obsidian. And the benefit of using memory via MCP is you could just go into your settings and just turn it on and off. Basic memory has a bunch of different tools like delete note, read note, build context, canvas, list directory, move note, sync status, list memory projects. There's so many tools here and it keeps getting better. And by the way, I connected to Cloud Desktop, I connected to Cloud Code, I connected to Cursor, I connected to Gemini, I've connected it to Kiro.dev. Pretty much everywhere I'm working with MCP, I'm able to connect my basic memory. So I'm talking about something I'm gonna build with Cloud Desktop. And then when I'm building Cloud Code or in Cursor or both of them, they're both able to access the same memory bank and see my progress based on what was saved in the memory. And that's a differentiating factor between these native memories that are built into these apps. But most mobile clients don't have MCP support, at least local MCP support, standard IO. So my phone doesn't have access to basic memory. That's the one downside of using MCP based memory. But obviously when I'm on my computer, I'd be very happy to use the native built in memory via ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, et cetera. Okay, so now we talked about these built-in memory features, MCP implementations, the benefits of them, but it's actually a double-edged sword. There's a flip side to this, and it all comes down to context. So let me give you some context. Memory is one of the key components, in my opinion, to reaching AGI. Not that we're gonna get AGI in ChatGPT or Claude, and the memory we're getting here and the memory for AGI are different types of memory, but this is a huge first step. 
because to reach AGI, we're gonna need to get past the short-term memory limitation. And we've talked about this a lot on the channel, the limitations of the context window. The context window is essentially your given chat short-term memory. The longer your chat gets, the context window gets smaller and essentially dumber and less efficient. And over the last year, we've seen several AI companies release models with increasingly larger context windows. Like Gemini now has a million token context window. Cloud Forsana also has a million token context window in the API. ChatGPT 5 has, I think, 400,000 token context window right now. So as context windows get bigger, it kind of solves that problem, or so you would think. But as it turns out, just because we give it longer short-term memory, larger context windows, they don't actually perform as well. And this is where the term context engineering becomes really important. Essentially, context engineering is being mindful and managing your context. Just because you could hold a lot of context doesn't mean you should use all your context. You should be very selective about it because context is the most important thing with LLMs. And what I'm getting at is as great as it is that now ChatGPT, Claude, and Gemini could look at past conversations, those past conversations and whatever it finds gets entered into context. So on the one hand, this is very beneficial. This is very cool. I'm excited about it. But on the flip side, what this essentially does is it poisons our context. Context, again, is everything within your conversation. Not only your prompts count as context, but the response of the AI counts as context. Anything you add in there gets added as context as well. If you've ever experienced hallucinations, sometimes they're caused because of context slop, which is essentially too much context, too much going on. It doesn't know how to differentiate good context from bad context. It confuses the AI, or you said something incorrect, or the AI made an incorrect assumption. In every turn of a conversation, all the context gets re-added. So essentially we're compounding this and it can poison the chat. And essentially once all your past chats are potential context, things could get crazy. So what I'm getting at here is memory is great, but you need to be able to control it. Wouldn't it be great if you're able to manage your own memories? If you could forget everything and actually believe that Elon Musk founded Tesla? Unfortunately, these memories are hard coded into our brains, but that doesn't have to be the case with AI. It could be very beneficial for it to have memories, but we don't want past context to poison our chats. And this is especially important when you're using AI to make serious decisions or using it for work. And that's what brings me back to the MCP implementation of memory. We have a little bit more control over it. We can edit the memories. We can turn it on and off with a click without having to go back to the settings every time. And potentially in the near future, we'll be able to connect this to all of our various LLMs, all our various AIs that we use on a daily basis. A unified memory that we can control and plug and play with. And I think that is the key. So that's my take on memory. Overall, I'm really excited. I think this is a huge step. I just hope that in the near future, Anthropic will add more granular controls on how we could turn it on and turn it off and not just turn it off completely through the settings. More than that, I hope maybe we'll be able to share memories across our AI platforms. Our best case scenario, ChatGPT, Gemini, even Claude will support locally hosted MCB servers also on mobile so that we'll have more control and more portability for memory. I hope you guys found this video insightful or you learned something. If you have any feedback, drop it in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.